Someone with questionable life experience once said, there are many ways to skin a cat. Now, Blender is not a cat, but there usually are a lot of ways to go about any particular task within Blender. So today, we're going to go over three methods for creating stairs. Method number one, add a cube. Tap the N key, and under the Items tab, change some dimensions. Change the Z dimension to match your floor-to-floor -floor height, and the X dimension to be the desired stair width. Hit Tab, then 2 to go into Edge Select mode. With the top edge selected, hit Control b and drag the bevel as far as it will go. Click the bevel menu that appears in the bottom right corner, and under Profile Type, hit Custom. Set the preset to Steps. Now increase the number of segments. Two segments will be required for each step, plus one at the end if we want to end on a tread. Where I live, the max riser height is about 210 millimeters, which means about 16 risers for a 3 meter floor to floor distance. So that means I need 33 segments. Select a different preset and then the steps again to refresh the bevel. Delete unnecessary vertices and voila, you have a simple stair. Method number two, extrude a plane from one floor to the next along the z-axis. Go into edit mode and add loop cuts. The number of risers will be one more than your number of cuts. As with our last example, the floor change is 3 meters, so that's 15 cuts for 16 risers. Extrude the second lowest loop to get your tread depth. For me, that'll be 325 millimeters. And then add some detail. I'm going to add a 25 millimeter nosing, 1 inch for you Imperial folks. Uh, then select your stair and separate it from the guide we've created. This is no longer required. Hit the wrench icon and search for the array modifier. Switch from relative to constant offset and create a copy of your tread to pull dimensions from. You can see dimensions by tapping N and looking at the item dimensions. Go back to our array. The Z value should match the Z dimension of our step, while the Y value should be the Y dimension minus our nosing, which in my case brings us to 0.3. Now increase the count to 16 risers. Now I can see I goofed up a little bit on my tread depth. It should have been 235 instead of 325, so I'm going to fix that real quick. I'm also going to add some closed stringers now. The nice thing about this method is that if we edit one stair, the rest will change as well, which gives some nice flexibility. Method number three, the third and most convoluted method, is to use geometry nodes to create a stair. Now, a quick disclaimer. If you've never touched geonodes, this probably won't give you enough detail to follow along. Uh, there are very few circumstances where I would recommend going this route, but it is a lot of fun, so let's hop into an overview. Um, also, one advantage is it does give you a lot of flexibility to adjust your stair on the fly, which in some cases you really want, especially if you're creating a lot of the exact same stair. Okay, so step number one, create a new geometry node setup and add a mesh cube node. Then add a combine XYZ node and plug it into the size. Drag the blank output from the group input into the X, Y, and Z values and rename them stair width, tread depth, and tread thickness. Access this menu by tapping N. Go to the modifiers tab and set these values according to your local code. Uh, I will use 0.9 for width. That's pretty common for a residential stair. I'll use 0.235 for tread depth and 0.05 for tread thickness. All right, so we have one tread. I'm going to add a frame to stay organized. Add a curved line. Add a join geometry node. Add a combine XYZ node. Plug the XYZ vector into end. Drag the blank output from group input into the Z value. Rename it. Uh, I'm going to call it floor height. I will set that value to 3 meters because that's pretty typical in a residential building. Okay, next step, add a curve to points node. Use a math node to divide the floor height by the maximum riser height. Uh, I will make the max riser height a parameter like we've done with a bunch of these, so we can just adjust it from the modifiers tab. Between the math node and the curve to points node, I will add another math node and set it to ceiling. This ensures that the riser count is rounded in such a way that the riser height will never be more than the max value we assign. Add an instance to points node and plug the tread geometry into instance. Now we're, we're getting somewhere. Add a transform node to make sure the top tread aligns with the uh, to make sure the top of the tread aligns with the points. I'll do this with a math node that subtracts half the tread thickness from the z coordinate. Now it's important to do this so that your stairs actually align with your levels. Now we need to change the y value for our curve end. I'll do this by multiplying our riser count by the tread depth and subtracting 25 millimeters for each tread to account for the nosing. It's important to also subtract a value of one from our riser count, as counting the bottom riser will lead to some spacing issues.
this should now be a this should now be functional as a stair with some adjustable parameters, but it looks a bit sad with no stringers to hold up the tread, so let's do something about that. Now my recording had some issues when I was creating the stringer, so I'm just going to walk through what I did here. So you're going to start by adding a mesh line node, and then to place that line, we're going to take the tread width. We are going to divide that value by two, so take, because the line automatically comes in at the, at the origin here. So by dividing that the number of the width here by two, uh, we can then add that to the, the x-coordinate and it moves it to the edge of the treads. And we also want the line to start at the nose of the tread, so we're really trying to move it to a corner. So we also take the tread depth, divide that by negative two in this instance to bring it to the front. <coughs> so then we were extruding that mesh and we're adding a vector direction for the extrusion to make it extrude along the z. So the offset for the end point was done by taking the value that we were using for the end point of our original curve line and plugging that into offset just along the, the y direction, and then using the floor height, which was also what we used for our original curve line. So that just makes sure that it's the same slope and the same length as the curve that's driving this whole stair. Now, what else is going on here? Okay, yeah, so once we had the slope, we could extrude it along the z direction. And you can see if I drag this slider here, that's just going to change the, the depth of the stringer. And that I, I just kind of eyeballed until it looked right. I didn't have a specific value that I was trying to use there. Okay, so the next extrude mesh is what we use to get the thickness of the stringer here. So I'll just show that there. And to get a second stringer, what I did is I joined the geometry of the first one, and then I also plugged it into a transform geometry node, and then just applied some more math to move that stringer over to the other side, and then plug that as well into the join geometry node. And there, now we have a nice functional stair. So we can edit all the parameters here, and everything should update automatically. So right now I have the floor head at 2, I can change that to 4, and we see it automatically updates with the risers and bring the stringers along with it. Now, I'm going to put that back to 2 for floor height, and I'm going to create a copy just to show that this, this stair isn't quite fully built out. Uh, if I do apply the geometry and hit tab, we'll notice that there's some holes in the mesh that I wasn't able to fix within the deadline I set for myself on finishing this. So if you do apply it, you can just fill those. As a final note, you'll need to add a realize instances node right before the group output if you want to be able to apply the nodes and make further adjustments. Anyways, I hope this helped. Subscribe if you'd like to see some more 3D creative content.